You're standing on the deck of a majestic ship, the US dollar, basking in the sunlight and feeling secure. You don't see the hidden cracks below the waterline, national debt, inflation, geopolitical tensions, each a potential threat to your financial voyage. Today, we will explore these remote vulnerabilities and learn how to navigate through the uncertain waters that could lie ahead. Section 1. The Dollar's Vulnerabilities We all know that the dollar is a powerhouse in the global economy, right? Let's look closely at some factors contributing to the dollar's instability. First up is the national debt. The U.S. national debt is skyrocketing and it's a ticking time bomb for the dollar. The debt pile grows as the government borrows and spends more than it takes in, and the dollar's value weakens. Scary, huh? Next, inflationary pressures. The dollar's value decreases with the government printing more money to cover expenses. They have lost all cred credibility. First they told us there was no inflation, and then inflation is transitory. Then they'll stop inflation, and then inflation peaked, and then it reared its head again. And the time to be scared is when they tell us, don't worry, we've got all this covered. That's the time to be scared. And it's like when you have too many slices of pizza. The more you have, the less each piece is worth. The same goes for the dollars. And let's recognize the geopolitical factors. Conflicts and tensions worldwide can lead to losing confidence in the US dollar. Remember when the Swiss franc was decoupled from the euro? That caused a lot of currency fluctuations, and the same could happen to the dollar. Now, let's take a trip down memory lane. Remember the hyperinflation in Zimbabwe? Or the collapse of the Venezuelan Bolivar? These are just a few examples of currency collapses that devastated the economy and the people. Can you imagine if the same thing happened to the dollar? Drawing parallels between these historical events and the potential effects of a dollar collapse is not far-fetched. A failure of the dollar could lead to skyrocketing prices, loss of savings, and a decrease in the standard of living. Sounds like a nightmare, right? So, as you can see, the dollar is not as invincible as it might seem. The dollar is on shaky ground with the growing national debt, inflationary pressures, and geopolitical factors. So, you know, if the consumer's flattish, investments petering out, government spending has hit the wall, what's left? Well, what's left is net exports, uh, exports minus imports. And how do you drive net exports? You trash your currency. It's, it's as simple as that. You, you basically try to devalue the dollar. And that's, that's what's behind QE, that's what's behind QE2, um, that's what's behind low interest rates. Basically doing everything possible to trash the dollar relative to other currencies, to drive exports. And if we look at history, the aftermath of a currency collapse is not pretty. Let's hope it doesn't come to that, but it's always better to be prepared. Section 2. Ripple Effects on Debt Okay, we've established that the dollar is shaky. But what does this mean for our debts? Spoiler alert, it's not good news. Let's start with consumer debt. Think about your credit cards, mortgages, and car loans. These are all debts that we, as consumers, owe. Now, suppose the dollar collapses. The dollar's value decreases, meaning your debt's value could increase. Yikes! That $200,000 mortgage could cost you much more in the long run. And what about your credit card debt? the interest rates could skyrocket, making it even harder to pay off your balance. Now, let's talk about government debt. The U.S. government owes a ton of money, both domestically and internationally. If the dollar collapses, the value of that debt increases, and it becomes even more challenging to pay it off. It could lead to losing confidence in the U.S. government at home and abroad, leading to higher interest rates and making borrowing more expensive for the government. It's like a vicious cycle. And remember corporate debt. Companies often borrow money to fund their operations, expand, or invest in new projects. If the dollar collapses, the value of their debt increases, and it becomes more difficult for them to pay it off. It could lead to bankruptcy for some companies, job losses, and decreased stock values. And guess who suffers the most? Yep, that's right, us. The regular folks who work for these companies or invest in their stocks. Section 3. Protecting Your Finances So, we've been through the doomsday scenarios, but let's flip the script. Instead of panicking, how about we arm ourselves with some financial self-defense techniques? Here are some strategies to fortify your finances. 1. Diversifying Investments Remember when you were a kid and you'd trade baseball cards or Pokemon cards? Well, diversification is the grown-up version of that. 
You're swapping out different financial assets so you don't get stuck holding the losing card. Spread your investment wings into foreign markets, commodities, and even sectors you've never considered. Diversification is the opposite of focus. It's safe. It provides protection. You will not get excessively rich. That's not possible. But you have a high likelihood of maintaining and building your wealth. This is actually the only reason why you should diversify. The only reason is safety. Bonds, mutual funds, international real estate, these are all game. The idea is that when one industry takes a hit, others may be flourishing, effectively balancing out your risk. 2. Exploring alternative currencies. It's 2023, folks. Digital currencies are not sci-fi anymore. They're as accurate as the phone you're probably watching this video on. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and some stable coins can add a layer of protection against a shaky dollar. These digital currencies aren't tied to any government or central bank, making them resistant to the vulnerabilities that affect traditional currencies. But keep in mind, they're not without risk. They're volatile, so do your homework and allocate just a portion of your portfolio to them. 3. Building Emergency Funds Ah, the good old emergency fund. The financial cushion that stands between you and, well, emergencies. If you're scratching your head, wondering where to start, it's simpler than you think. Aim for at least three to six months of living expenses. Stash this money in a liquid account to quickly grab it without penalties. In case of a dollar collapse, having access to quick funds can be invaluable, allowing you to adapt and pivot as needed. So there you go, three actionable ways to build your financial fortress. It's like wearing a seatbelt. You hope you'll never need it, but man, if you do, you'll be glad it's there. Section 4. Expert Interviews Opinions abound regarding financial matters, especially something as massive as the potential dollar collapse. However, the folks who catch my attention have spent decades studying the intricacies of economic failures. First, let's talk about Carmen Reinhardt and Kenneth Rogoff, a dynamic duo if there ever was one. These two wrote, This Time is Different, Eight Centuries of Financial Folly. If that title doesn't tell you they mean business, I don't know what will. Eight centuries of data on financial collapse have been meticulously combed through and analyzed. Their research connects today's economic indicators and similar signs preceding historic meltdowns. They discuss that an unprecedented accumulation of national debt is often a harbinger of economic downfall pointing out that U.S. national debt has surged to levels only seen during World War II. It's jolting to realize we're operating on such thin ice, right? Rogoff and Reinhardt also delve into the nature of financial repression, a term used to describe measures governments might take to liquidate debt, often at the expense of private sector savers. It usually involves caps on interest rates and forcing institutions to hold government debt. Have you ever considered how that could affect your 401k or your kid's college fund? Yeah, that's worth pondering. Now, let's turn to Susie Orman. You may recognize her from television, where she distills complex financial advice into digestible nuggets. Susie has been quite candid that a dollar collapse isn't some Armageddon scenario to fantasize about. It could happen. Yeah, you know, it's not just a recession. It's right now, given the state of the economy, truthfully, for money that you want safe and sound, why not just simply buy three month or six month treasury bills? They're paying currently about 4.8%. I would not go out further than three or six months at this point in time, because I do think interest rates are gonna continue to go up. She elaborates that diversification isn't just a smart move. It's a survival tactic. For her, this means spreading your assets across various currencies and even precious metals. Susie also advocates having an emergency fund in a stable foreign currency as an extra cushion. After all, you can't predict emergencies, but you can prepare for them. Reinhardt, Rogoff, and Susie Orman agree that the potential dollar collapse should be a wake-up call. They are not alone among experts in suggesting that the US dollar is inching closer to a tipping point primarily because of its unsustainable debt, inflationary risks, and the geopolitical landscape. The aftermath of such a collapse? Think of severe inflation, a weakened economy, and the unsettling possibility of social unrest. So, considering all this, 
isn't it time to question how safeguarded we are? These experts share their wisdom as a cautionary tale, not as a Halloween scare. It may be time to listen up and take some preventative action. Section 5. Personal Stories Have you ever wondered how people cope when their world turns upside down, financially speaking? Sure, a collapsing dollar may sound like the plot of a Hollywood thriller, but it's a reality that many have lived through in various corners of the globe. The experiences of those who've weathered such storms offer us invaluable life lessons. Take Zimbabwe, for instance. Imagine waking up one day, going to the supermarket with a wad of cash, and discovering that you can't even buy a milk carton. That was the daily life of many Zimbabweans during the late 2000s hyperinflation. One fascinating adaptation was how quickly people shifted their assets. Instead of holding on to cash, many would immediately buy tangible goods, everything from groceries to gasoline. These items held value and could be bartered when needed. Another coping mechanism was using foreign currency for savings, particularly the US dollar and the South African rand, to preserve the value of their hard-earned money. It was like a financial survival kit. Or consider Argentina's crisis in 2001. Logging into your bank account and discovering that you are unable to withdraw your money can be a frustrating experience. Yeah, a full-on heart-stopping moment. To survive, Argentinians had to be creative. Neighborhoods established barter markets, where skills and goods were exchanged in a way that bypassed the need for cash. At the Killer Baking Company in Northern California, where they say the brownies are to die for, the baking is done inside an oven bought through barter. Well, not only did I save on the price, but I also saved because I'm using, I'm basically paying for it with my brownies. Owner Michael Garzuzzi conducts 30% of his business through barter, which is traditionally when two parties exchange goods or services instead of paying cash. You can trade an hour of carpentry work for a week's groceries. It could have been better, but it was a lifeline. Regarding debt, some people started rallying to convert their loans into more stable currencies, even taking their banks to court for the right to pay back loans in cash that wasn't spiraling out of control. Some even went as far as converting part of their debt into commodities like gold, which traditionally holds value better than currency. And let's not overlook the small businesses. Many switched to local sourcing to avoid dealing with foreign exchange rates, while others diversified their services to include more recession-proof offerings, like repairs and essential goods. You see, these folks didn't just throw in the towel. They adapted, pivoted, and found ways to protect themselves and their financial futures. Their stories show us that while we can't predict the future, we can prepare for the unexpected. If the dollar crumbles, we must muster the same ingenuity and resilience. Are you starting to see why thinking about a dollar collapse isn't just some academic exercise? It's about visualizing how to adapt your personal finance strategy in a world where the usual rules don't apply. In the end, the most important currency you have is your resourcefulness. While the dollar's status as the world's reserve currency has offered a sense of stability, the realities of soaring national debt, inflationary pressures, and geopolitical tensions reveal cracks in its foundation. The stories of those who've endured financial crises show us that adaptability, resilience, and resourcefulness are vital in navigating such challenges. Now is the time to assess the strength of your financial fortress, diversify your investments, explore alternative currencies, and build a robust emergency fund. With knowledge, preparation, and a proactive approach, you can transform uncertainty into empowerment. After all, your financial well-being is a journey, and you have the power to steer the course. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the dollar's vulnerabilities and how to protect your finances. If you found this information valuable, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it with your friends and family. Your engagement helps us create more content that empowers you on your financial journey. And remember to comment below with your thoughts or any questions. Finally, watch our next video where we'll explore other important financial topics that impact your everyday life. Knowledge is power. We can build a brighter financial future together.